This episode of the Two Mics, One Take podcast is sponsored by Wink. Wink is a revolutionary wine club that delivers high quality wine straight to your door. Get four bottles of wine for $30 with complimentary shipping when you go to trywink.com forward slash two mics. That's trywink.com forward slash two mics. Hey everyone, it's Aaron here. Welcome back to a brand new episode of the Two Mics, One Take podcast. I am your host, Aaron, and I am back, baby. Last podcast was July 4th, (laughs) two weeks ago, (laughs) almost two weeks ago, okay? But I have a good reason. I have had a disgusting, horrible, life-debilitating chest cold, and uh, I have been sleeping. I've been in the olden sleep, guys. It's been bad. I my room is just a mess and like I even I even still have a little bit of the raspiness in my voice, but you know, that just makes this podcast twenty five percent sexier. <laughs> but uh yeah, man, I've missed so much news and especially that San Diego Comic Con just happened and it's like it's like throwing a grenade of, of comic book news into uh into a garbage can full of fucking dynamite. That's how much news there was. So this is a two-parter episode, all right? I have episode 72 up, which is this one currently, and then 70, uh, 72 is going to be the ketchup podcast. Get yourself some fries, put some ketchup on there, because we catching up on some news, okay? And then episode 73 is going to be all about San Diego Comic-Con, and it's going to be epic. There was so much news in my one page that I literally had to get basically had to do a two-parter show because because holy shit like my notes was like it's like there's no way I'm going to have people listen to possibly a three-hour podcast but that could just be hyperbole so now that you know what's coming up we are going to of course have our regular show right now to catch up on the news which is of course DC news Marvel news and general pop culture news, and um, yeah, and then we'll, uh, it's, it's a big recording day for me, but uh, hopefully you'll enjoy both podcasts, so uh, yeah. All right, so we have to start with a segment that, uh, it's a very painful segment to start off with, but of course we need to start with a in memorial section, uh, a section that uh, really pains me to, to bring up and, and something that uh, we started to do. Uh, We have to talk about the death of uh, three pretty big icons to both the nerd community and the the music uh, community. Uh, First off, we have to talk about the passing of Joan Lee. She, of course, is the wife to Stan Lee. They have been married for 69 years, which is incredible. Um, She was, uh, most famously to me, she was the voice of Madam Web on the... Spider-Man animated series and um yeah this is just this is just very devastating uh she had a stroke in the hospital and she was hospitalized and then uh she later uh died at a later date um yeah just such a it's it's so hard when you when you lose someone but to but to when you really think about it if you think about what Stanley is going through is like he had this woman in his life for 69 years and now that constant part of his life is just gone and it's it's ultimately tragic and we are gonna miss her uh Joan Lee was 95 and uh the next person on this list uh to remember is zombie pioneer the godfather of zombies George Romero uh, he had been struggling with uh, lung cancer and unfortunately lost the battle. And I mean, another devastating blow to to the community. You know, just a major, absolute pioneer for the zombie. Just really the the guy that made the best zombie films. Really helped. You know, zombies as a as a fictional creation. Really 
blend into popular culture and really started things up for, for the rest of us. And, you know, I wouldn't know where zombies as, as characters would be today if it not were for George Romero. Uh, he was 77 years old. And uh, the final person that we have to uh, give mem- remembrance to is uh, Chester Bennington. Uh, he's the lead singer of Linkin Park. Just uh, a huge, just a really, I think really a voice of a of a generation for, for kids who, alternative kids who really didn't feel like they fit in. Uh, famously a part of the band uh, Linkin Park. You know, uh, I feel like a lot of people kind of anecdotally, like they got through their their teenage relationships or breakups with Linkin Park and just, you know, just really helped them through that. And of course, just in another sense, they just they just made incredible music. And uh, Chester uh, unfortunately took his own life. And um, that's the thing about Suicide, man. It's it's just no matter how rich you are, no matter who you are, it will creep up on you now and then and then sometimes it, it gets you in a metaphorical chokehold that you cannot escape and uh, obviously you need to get help wherever you can but sometimes just like um, just like George's battle with cancer you lose those battles and uh, you know Chester was fighting a, an incredibly long battle something that he had faced in his childhood uh, as a child, he was um, uh, sexually abused by an older gentleman. And, uh, you know, it seems that carried over and it. It was too much for him, even in his early life. So, obviously, this is an incredibly sad news. And, uh, of course, you can always get help. And there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. And it always will get better. And, um, yeah, Chester Bennington was 41 years old. So now, if you will all join me in a moment of silence for these three fallen, incredible human beings, we'll take a moment of silence. Okay, thank you very much. All right, let's get on with the show. Now we're going to start with DC News. So let's get... Oh my God, there's so much news. Not really, it's, it's a good healthy one. All right, so first news topic. The graphic novel, The Elseworlds Tale, Batman, Gotham by Gaslight, is officially being turned into a DC animated feature. Uh, this comic was released in 1989, and it was a one-shot and uh, yes, that's the thing, man. I think um, Elseworlds Tales, that's uh, that's really a great thing uh, for you know the DC films because there's such there's such a gold mine that uh, that DC has where they have so many <laughs> so many years of stories that they can just mine for animated movies, and I feel like we still we still haven't done all of the classics, but uh, yeah, Gotham by Gaslight, a really awesome, um, you know, it's like. It's set in the 1800s, and it pits uh, essentially the Cape Crusader Batman against Jack the Ripper. And um, yeah, man, I think actually I think it might be one of the first Elseworlds stories that DC did. And I think this is probably one of the things that uh, that made Elseworlds such a big uh, line at DC. But uh, yeah, no, it's funny how this got revealed is. On the back of the the box, the Blu-ray box for Batman uh, and Harley Quinn, you see uh, it's a sneak peek at DC Universe's next animated movie, Batman Gotham by Gaslight. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, I have not uh, personally read. I think I flipped through it uh, at uh, my friend's house, but uh, I have. I currently have a copy. I have borrowed it from uh, from that friend, so uh, yeah, and I'm I'm very excited to read this, but uh, yeah, so that's coming down the pipeline, 
and uh, no no news on when it's coming out. Maybe 2018, maybe 2019, but uh, who knows? All right, next news story. We're gonna do some comic book news. So Sean Murphy, Sean Gordon Murphy, artist extraordinaire. This guy is an absolute incredible artist. Uh, go read The Wake he did with Scott Snyder. Uh, go read uh, his uh, some of his uh, you know punk rock Jesus. Got it. It's he he wrote and uh, and and drew that. You gotta you know read that. He is doing a uh, a story called Batman White Knight, where it seems the Joker is going to be the the protagonist of the story, and it's gonna have Bruce Wayne as like this uh this one percenter villain who rules over gotham with like an iron fist and very much an, an evil batman and you're gonna have this joker who's like an anarchist and he's gonna be the protagonist and of course this is gonna be elseworlds exchange uh elseworlds uh version of uh batman because they couldn't do this in canon let's be honest but uh yeah if you go to the website they actually have some little preview pages and fu- oh my god that's the thing I love about um, stories. I love I love comics that are written and drawn by the same person because it is exactly it is the purest form of what the the writer is getting through. Like Sean is literally thinking the story and he is drawing exactly what he wants to see. Like every single panel, every single pen stroke is exactly what he thought his story would look like on the page. And, uh, of course, he's just an incredible artist. I mean, uh, go see some of the internal artwork that he has on the uh, website. The link is in the description. But, um, yeah. This is interesting because this is going to uh, kind of coincide with uh, with another kind of dark Elseworlds uh, Batman story with, uh, with uh, Nightwing, the New Order. So I thought that was uh, pretty funny. But, yeah, Batman White Knight. It is coming out October 4th. And, uh, yeah, can't wait for that. All right, in other comic book news, uh, apparently there are uh, variant covers of uh, uh, certain DC issues where it's um, it's like a Gotham City Garage and it's like all these like famous uh, DC superheroes, supervillains that are just basically like kind of biker chick versions of the characters. And I actually haven't noticed um, you know any of uh, any of these variant covers. But I have uh, taken a look at some of them, and uh, they're they're really cool. Especially, I like the Wonder Woman one and the Catwoman one uh, specifically. And uh, yeah, we're actually getting uh, DC is launching a female focused Gotham City Garage comic. This is uh, basically you take the variant covers, you kind of expel that with uh, more with more story obviously you, you pump it full of story just like what they did with uh dc bombshells which started out as variant covers and now is a pretty successful comic and uh yeah so this is uh set in a alternate version of the dc universe where governor lex Luthor has transformed the traditionally dystopian uh dystopian of gotham city into a uh contemporary paradise known as the garden and uh yeah so it's just basically like a badass biker chick version of all of your favorite DC. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming uh, like all, all women. Uh, I looks like we're having uh, Big Barda, Steel, Catwoman, Harley Quinn, Silver Banshee, Hawkwoman, and uh, apparently a uh, Kryptonian. That um, uh, it's a girl named Kara Gordon. Hmm. Interesting last name. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think it's pretty cool where it's just like you see an image like so striking like these variant covers and you're like, but what's the story behind that? And then they make the story and it's it's pretty it's, it's really interesting. I think uh, I think that's actually a cool method. I think that's uh, that's going to be interesting that uh, this comic Gotham City Garage is coming out in August and I'm pretty sure it's going to make a lot of buzz. All right. Next news story. So DC is putting out. Another, uh, they have launched another Earth One story, another story in the Earth One brand, which is essentially, you take uh, your character from DC, 
do another alternate turn on it, just like Elseworlds, but it's not under the DC Elseworlds. It's under their new label. Well, previously new label, which is uh, Earth-1. Uh, currently they have uh, Earth-1, Superman, Batman, Teen Titans, and uh, Wonder Woman, of course. But um, yeah, I've read most of them. Excellent stuff. El excellent Elseworld stuff. They the problem is that they come out so infrequently, so it's like, oh my god, it's like I want I want the the next you know novel right now. Uh, but uh, there's still I think there might be seven out right now. But I recommend obviously Batman, the Superman, and Wonder Woman. I have not read uh, the Teen Titans one yet. But uh, yeah. So the next one they announced in the in the Earth One storyline is going to be Green Lantern. And it looks like this time he's not going to be a pilot, he's going to be an astronaut, which is uh seems <laughs> seems a lot uh it seems to go in line with uh with the whole, you know, space cop thing. But um I'm going to see who it's written by. My internet's freaking out. Why are you freaking out, internet? All right, alternate Google, let's go. Come on now. And who is working on this one? Gabriel Hardman in Corona Beck Becco. Sorry, I don't know who that is. <laughs> but um, apparently this is going to be coming out March 20th. 2018 and is going to retell the story of Hal Jordan and uh, he's not going to work for Ferris there but Ferris Galactus and uh, let's see I know I'm just reading the description here so let's see here da, 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 da. so this story retells the earliest adventures of the hero without uh, constructs or uh, the constraints of continuity here, instead of a, a pilot, Hal Jordan is an astronaut of Ferris Galactic who begins the unfulfilling, <laughs> Jesus, the unfulfilling role of a astronaut per, per prospector ooh, until he discovers one of the rings of the Green Lantern Corps that leads him on a mission into space to rebuild the fallen Green Lantern Corps. Hmm. So I wonder what took them out. Interesting, but uh, yeah, and it seems that uh, Hal Jordan is going to be reimagined as a scientist, and uh, yeah, that will change how he uses his ring, so interesting. Yeah, man, I got to tell you, the Earth-1 uh, storylines, the best thing about them, obviously they're out of continuity, so you can really play around with those characters, but also they come out as one uh, hardcover to graphic novel, and you just get the whole story. The first volume, that's one story right there. It doesn't come out issue by issue. You just get it all in one really nice uh, hardcover or trade paperback. And I think it really helps the uh, the story flow. But uh, yeah, I'm glad the Green Lantern's coming down on the, uh, the Earth-1 storyline. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, next news story. Supergirl, Black, <laughs> Black Lightning, The Flash. Black Flash, Ooh, he he was there. He was there. You saw him. Black Flash. You saw him. He was he's everywhere. He was he was in DC. <laughs> he was in Legends of Tomorrow. But uh, yeah, so uh, TV Guide has a uh, cover, and it's just basically their Comic Con special, and uh, they have uh, they got everyone on there. They got uh, four covers. They got uh, special. They got one just for Supergirl. They got uh, one for. Uh, where it's uh, the Flash, Arrow, and uh, Black Lightning. There is no Legends of Tomorrow uh, cover. They have not worked them in. Very disappointed. But uh, yeah, you can see those covers. Actually, pretty nice uh, little splash, page, uh, splash pages of color with uh, you know the iconic characters in there. So uh, yeah, check it out. All right, some more Arrow news. We have uh, do 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 do. So Manu Bennett, his version of Deathstroke is going to be a regular part of season six and a mysterious season one character is going to return. All I'm saying is where my boy Tommy at? Oh, he, he died. He died in the fucking, no, he didn't come on, bring him back, 
break them back. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section who you think the season one character is going to be. And uh, are you excited for Manu Bennett coming back as Deathstroke? And will he be an, will he be an ally? Probably. He'll probably be an ally. Let's be honest. All right. Uh, some more DC TV news. Uh, Krypton is going to introduce Brainiac, Doomsday, and a lot more characters. And it will be it will take place in the past and present uh, DC universe. Uh, this show. Obviously coming out on sci-fi, so I don't think it's going to be, uh, have any part of the, the CW DC TV storyline, which, um, hopefully this show can kind of rise above in quality over a show like Gotham, but, um, yeah, the, the show sounds a little bit more interesting now, you know, exploring the, uh, their willingness to explore those characters is something that, uh, I think uh, the show needs to really succeed because that's what people want. They want the stories that they haven't told yet, like Brainiac and, and Doomsday. But uh, yeah. Next news story. Matt Reeves, the director of The Batman, has confirmed that the movie script has been rewritten from scratch. This is a pretty dramatic thing that's uh, that's happening. So basically taking the, uh, the Jeff John script and like, get it out of here. So uh, a lot of things are up in the air of like, you know, What's the story going to be about? Like, what's we need like one morsel of what the story was going to be about. We actually had uh, last podcast uh, Matt Reeves saying that he wants to do like a really detective noir version of Batman, which I was totally down for. But uh, then again, this raises the question of you know who's going to write it? Uh, is Deathstroke going to be in the, uh, the actual story? Because we did amount, uh, announce Joe Manganiello as Deathstroke, you know, is he still going to be in the film? Who knows? But, um, yeah, I think, honestly, I think when he was negotiating his contract, he was like, listen, I want to rewrite the script. And I think that's, that's one of the things he wanted. And I guess, uh, he got his deal. But, uh, yeah, so are you worried about this? I'm not. I think, uh, I think when you rewrite stuff, you really get to take a look at, like, and it, 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 if you take the the old script and the new script and you kind of find like a healthy medium, I think that's the the best option. But then again, he's the director. He's going to work with the writers. He's going to do his own thing. And uh, I have full faith in Matt Reeves. So, uh, yeah. All right. So Warner Brothers has dated two more untitled DC movies for 2020. And, uh, you know, obviously you have... Uh, they have been slated for April 3rd, 2020, and July 24th, 2020. So a lot of the uh, speculations, you know, possible options include uh, Suicide Squad 2, The Batman, Shazam, The Black Adam movie, Gotham City Sirens, The Batgirl movie, Nightwing, Justice League Dark, if that's even happening, maybe even a sequel to Justice League 2, sequel to Man of Steel, so, yeah. I mean, you know, it's... Oh, actually, sorry. I read this wrong. It's going to be February 14th, 2020 and June 5th, 2020. Interesting. Okay. All right. So, pretty much like start of the of the year and then in the middle with, uh, with summer. Okay. All right. Huh. I mean, we'll have to see. Because I ain't in the business of, of Slayton films. But, um, yeah. Let me know what you think those two spots are. What do you think we're going to get in 2020? you think we're going to get some Green Lantern action? Maybe some Shazam stuff? I feel like uh, the movie that like is in least development, you got to push it the furthest away. But, um, yeah. All right. Ah, okay. So Jared Leto, Jared Leto had an interview where uh, he was talking about his role as the Joker, and uh, he had a really weird quote. He was talking to Entertainment Tonight Canada, and uh, he was talking about starring in uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, and he was talking about the future of uh, you know as the Joker, and he gave like a really weird answer. He says, uh, 
talking about the Joker returning in Suicide Squad 2 is like talking about Fight Club. It's the first rule. Unless you want to uh, gar garnel your testicles, it's probably better to leave it. So, uh, yeah. So, basically, just him saying, like, you don't talk about Joker being in Suicide Squad 2. And also, I think I heard, like, a rumor that there was going to be a suicide... There was going to be, like, a Joker versus Harley Quinn movie. Some crazy rumors like that. But, um, yeah. I mean, if he wanted... If he wanted to leave, I feel like... Listen, you can recast anyone. Especially when you put him in heavy makeup like that. You can recast whoever you want, to be quite honest. But, um... I think I think we can give him a second chance. Just you know, let him grow on us. Get uh, get a director that uh, really wants to focus on the Joker, and uh, I think things will work out. You know, that's my thoughts. But obviously, I want to know your two cents. Let me know in the comment section down below. You like Jared Leto? Who's your favorite Joker? All right, let me know in the comment section down below. But that's it for DC news. Let's get into some Marvel news. And I think one of the biggest Marvel news of the past, the last two weeks, was casting for New Warriors. And uh, yeah, man, this is uh, the the full cast, including uh, a fan favorite, Squirrel Girl, who uh, you know a lot of people think you couldn't put her in the MCU, but bam, baby, she's in there. Uh, I don't really know a lot about her character, but I know of Squirrel Girl. Uh, I kind of threw up. Uh, like osmosis and you know through the general idea of like you know knowing like oh this girl that controls squirrels and like just kind of like this ridiculous zany you know fun idea and I, I think it's crazy that they're bringing it to uh you know the screen but um yeah man let's talk about the cast so uh first off we have do 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 all right let's see over here This article's a little bit crazy. It's a little bit crazy, Doug. All right, so her name, the the lady that is playing S Squirrel Girl, is uh, Milana Vayentrub. Is that how you say your last name? I fucking butchered that one right now. But uh, yeah, she's playing Squirrel Girl. She uh, was recently, uh, recently on This Is Us. And, um, yeah, so she is playing, of course, uh, the titular Squirrel Girl. You have, uh, the character playing a Mr. See, this is, this is a little bit hard for me because I haven't, I haven't heard about any of these characters. Like, that's just something I haven't read at Marvel. So, uh, you know, forgive me. Uh, Derek Th 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 Thieler? That's a weird, that's a, that's a cool name. It's like T-H-E-L-E-R, Thieler. He will be playing the role of Mr. Immortal. And uh, the next actor is... His name is Jeremy Tan Tardy. He will be playing Night Thrasher. And, uh, da, 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 da. Callum Worthley will be playing Speedball. Hopefully you know these actors, because I do not. <laughs> uh, Matt Moy will be playing Microbe. And, uh, finally, Kate Commer will be playing Derby. Huh. Well, hopefully for all you new <laughs> new Warriors fans, you're probably excited about this casting. Unfortunately, I haven't read <laughs> even a morsel of New Warriors. 
So, uh, yeah, take that uh, with a grain of salt. And uh, I haven't really, you know, heard of any of these actors. So, yeah, this is the most straightforward news topic there is. But, uh, yeah, let's go on to something that I actually know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you'll be getting uh, New Warriors in 2018. But, uh, yeah. So we got some official stills for Black Panther. And uh, we got some really cool stuff. The link is in the description down below. This is all coming from Entertainment Weekly. And, uh, man, I'm just... Like, the, the stuff they're doing with color and pattern and, and all the set designing and the character designs, it looks really cool, man. I think um, I think when I'm, when you're looking at uh, some of the stuff that are coming in in MCU fa uh, Phase 3, they're really bumping up that color palette. They are really making uh, all the characters really stand out, having all these different, uh, you know, different pieces of clothing and weapons. We gotta talk about... The lady with the lion fists. That shit is dope. Best character of the movie besides Black Panther. I'm calling it. Like, there's a really incredible stuff here. So, obviously, since it's an audio podcast, link will be in the description down below. But, uh, yeah, you get uh, a lot of different characters. A really, really healthy amount. And, of course, you get this nice, really big uh, group shot of our, our main characters. But, uh, yeah, man, Black Panther, it's looking good. It's looking really good. All right, another you know photo we have is of course Stan Lee. He actually paid a visit to the the set of Avengers: Infinity War, and I gotta tell you, man, picture yourself as Stan Lee, which I know is very hard. Picture yourself as Stan Lee walking on to a multi-million-dollar set of a movie and seeing those characters that you worked as a young adult come to real life. And you're surrounded by all your creations. That must have been a absolutely surreal moment. And you know they they owe it all to him. Like it's insane. Like you go in there, you're seeing Doctor Strange, you're seeing Iron Man, you're seeing Spider Man. It's just, and you know you're seeing all the work that uh, that has been on for your entire life. But I mean that must have been like an absolutely transcending dream come true for for Stanley. And I think like obviously he's he's worked he's worked in cameos for like Spider-Man back in 2002 and like all these different like you know kind of little moments here, but to see all of his characters under one roof, it must have been just like an absolutely mind-blowing scene. So uh yeah, link will be in the description down below. He has a huge smile on his face, but uh yeah, that was really cool. Speaking of Avengers Infinity War, so, according to co-director Joe Russo, he says that it might be the longest <laughs> fucking movie. He's saying uh, it's uh, certainly going to be a film that lives in the two and a half hour mark, two and a half hour plus range. So, two and a half hour plus, we're getting close to maybe two hours 45, two hours 55, if you get to two hours 55, just make it a three-hour movie, baby. Okay? Here's the thing, guys. People, some people are afraid of the length of a movie or TV show. I say fucking let that dice roll, baby. Give me that extended cut in the movie, because that's the thing about movies, man, is, you know, we're getting this 28, May 4th, 2018. You were sitting down going into that roller coaster ride. And you get like a good, you know, maybe usually it's an hour, hour 30, maybe two hours. If you can squeeze out as much fucking awesome shit as you can in that one year, people. And and imagine like you're, you're a comic book fan of only Marvel. And that's like your one shot of the year for, for that. Well, usually cause, cause usually Marvel puts out more, but imagine you're in there and you just, you fucking get it all, man. So I personally am not afraid of a three hour, especially a three hour Avengers movie. Are you fucking kidding me? This movie is going to be fucking insane. Like, I think we can just close up the MCU right now after Infinity War. I don't know how I feel sorry for Avengers 4. Because like, what the fuck do you do after that, man? Like, imagine. Because you know what happens? It's like Avengers Infinity War 
it doesn't even it's not even technically like an Avengers movie like yeah you'll have the Avengers in there transcendentally but this is like fucking everyone like Kevin Feige has come out and he said like yeah this is like conceivably everyone we've built up for the last 10 years of of the MCU like you're going to see everyone except for characters who obviously are dead both villains and heroes but like like this is this is Marvel the movie all right this is going to have like every single fucking character in it like it's going to be it's going to fucking transcend fucking film all right I know it's by hyperbole for sure but like come on man this is going to be this is like 10 years in the fucking making all right the hype level is through the roof all right and you got two of Marvel's best directors at the helm are you fucking kidding me this is a match made in heaven Avengers Infinity War is going to be it's going to be the be all end all of Marvel movies you know you will not be able to to tell another epic story the only way the only way I could see you like furthering like making the bar up and up and up is if we do like if we get into the realm of X-Men and Fantastic Four that's the that's honestly that's the only like way you're going to hype up these people all right, that's that's just me. That's just me. All right. But uh yeah. <laughs> oh man, moving on. Speaking of Marvel films, this is probably old news, but uh we're talking about the Spider-Man Homecoming uh box office. It opened at uh 117 million for a domestic opening and uh about 2 weeks ago it uh was at 250 257 million 100 million at uh at worldwide but right now we're going to do a live update on that uh, box office let's see spider-man homecoming let's go all right so currently spider-man homecoming has a worldwide gross of 571 million 100 million dollars so uh not bad nothing to shake at definitely uh you know and it's still it's still pumping through man it's still going and it and it's up against some pretty big movies like uh like dunkirk like uh, uh what is it fuck it just slipped my mind planet of the apes war for the planet of the apes nothing no movies to scoff at definitely going up against some some heavy hitters but uh yeah man spider-man was good it's making that money back at home there's some good stuff and uh, speaking of Spider-Man Homecoming we actually have some unused Spider-Man Homecoming uh, concept art and this is actually like uh, if you're a fan of Dan Slott's Superior Spider-Man run on Spider-Man the one where uh, Doc Ock takes over his uh, you know his body and uh, you know Doc Ock becomes Spider-Man in Peter Parker's body you get to see that uh, classic like red and black suit which is a suit that I really like but in this concept art, they actually they they seem to want to uh, take influence from the Superior Spider-Man costume, and I gotta say, it looks badass. It looks badass, but um, I feel like uh, it'll make more like you gotta start off with the classic red and blue, and then you can kind of work your way up to those other suits and to the Iron Spider suit and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, man, it, it's it's a good concept art too. I think it it fits just perfectly. I think it's. It's like a perfect uh, skin over. It's basically you take what um, what the the new Spider-Man Iron Man suit looks like, the the one that Tony Stark gave him, the the one that's been all over the posters, and you just paint it over with the skin of of Superior Spider-Man. I think that's what it looks exactly like. So yeah, really excellent art concept art, awesome stuff. So let's move on over to Marvel into their uh tv side and uh we get this really great uh poster poster quality uh empire magazine uh posts this like really awesome uh little little banner that they have here and it's uh it just says gang of four and it's obviously iron fist luke cage daredevil and jessica jones you know really poster worthy uh check it out in the description down below i'm so excited for fucking defenders and I don't know how to control myself. Oh, man. 
it's just I don't know, man. I just fucking in there. Next show, we're gonna talk about the new trailer, but like, I'm so excited, and I wish Iron Fist was in a was in a costume, but you know, maybe it'll happen in this this season. <laughs> Please, I need that Iron Fist suit. I need it. Oh man! But speaking of the Defenders, we have to talk about Luke Cage. So actress Lucy Liu will be directing the season two premiere of Luke Cage. That's awesome. You know, you take um, Lucy Liu, awesome actress. She actually has been directing, uh, you know, episodes of uh, Elementary. So it's cool to see her uh, moving on to and, and cutting her teeth on on bigger stuff, especially superhero stuff like this. So uh, yeah, I'm excited, and it's gonna be the premiere. So it's a, it's gonna be a very big episode for her. So so good on you, Lucy Liu. All right, finally, let's get to our general pop culture news, and of course, we gotta talk about. Stranger Things 2. It recently it recently got a new poster, and that poster released had released its official release date. And uh, that official release date is coming around good old Halloween 2017, and that's going to be premiering on Friday, October 27th. Uh, just in time, really, to to really binge, if you wanted to, conceivably binge maybe like the first couple episodes before Halloween and then finish it off on Halloween. But, um, yeah, man. And if you look at the poster, yo, how are these kids going to take down the beast, man? That's all I'm saying. And it is, it's actually really, it's, it's pretty creepy. It's like, it's basically, I think, I think, uh, let's like if Slenderman was a, a Titan from attack on Titan, that's that's what it looks like the creature they're about to face, but uh, yeah, this is, is very very spooky, <laughs> very spooky stuff. But uh, yeah, moving on to some other spooky stuff, we got to talk about The Walking Dead season eight. Uh, we got a poster. Oh, actually, sorry, it's not the poster. Ooh, that's coming. That's coming for the San Diego Comic Con release. Ooh, check out next podcast. But uh, yeah, it's an official uh, first look at season eight. And it's like this really nice image of uh, Carol and Daryl, just kind of hanging out. Carol in like full armor, uh, for, full armor with an assault rifle, and you got uh, Norman Reedus's version of of Daryl on the back of the bike, just kind of talking to her. But um, yeah, stay tuned to the next episode of this podcast to get a full season eight poster. Probably one of the best posters that uh, the Walking Dead seasons have done. I'd put it up there with uh, season three, where Rick's on top of the bus with the gun, as far as iconic photos. But uh, yeah, man, we are getting close to the season eight premiere of The Walking Dead. All right. So some pretty big news that actually. Uh, oh, sorry. This is San Diego Comic Con news. Putting that away. <laughs> All right. All right, our last news story is right now you can go to the Star Wars YouTube channel and check out this incredible behind the scenes of Star Wars The Last Jedi. And I got to say, man, just like the amount of attention that these people are doing. These are like true artists coming together, working day in and day out to just produced this like incredible incredible looking film and whoever is is doing the behind the scenes you know kind of documentary style of this big ups to them too they did another incredible job just really capturing the passion that these people have for star wars and yeah i love the theme in this how it's you know it's all about family but um yeah man star wars the last jedi shaping up to be really cool and yeah, man, feast your eyes on the Star Wars goodness. That's this behind-the-scenes trailer for uh, The Last Jedi. And, uh, yeah. I think that's it, guys. I think I think we are done. All right, so we just caught up on two weeks' worth of news. Next podcast is going to be all about San Diego Comic-Con 2017. It's going to be the best of San Diego Comic-Con 2017. There's going to be so much trailers to talk about. So many different uh, pieces of news, some movie announcements. Crazy shit is coming down the pipeline. 
I'm so excited. But of course, let's focus on this podcast right now. What did you like? What was your favorite news topic? How are you feeling? Let me know in the comment section down below. You can also tweet at me at two mics one take on Twitter. You can also write a post to me on Facebook. Also two mics one take. This podcast is available on SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes. Uh, on YouTube, it's going to be uh, both. Uh, it's going to be a video podcast, some nice graphics in there. But of course, on uh, only audio, it's going to be SoundCloud, of course. But uh, yeah. Let me know your thoughts on any of the topics in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching, listening, wherever you are. Take care.